What it is, y'all? All your fans. It's your main band, Master Sound. Leave the Master Sound to the round table of Company One. Subscribe to the spin booth. Yes, there's a band in the background. Things are happening right now. Don't ask. Just to say, I'm actually going to use a good portion of this video to talk about Alia's character specifically. But for this, in the meantime, this episode is pretty much about getting Kuze, aka Bashashika, to finally join the student council. At episode 4, you can call it one of the longer running stories in the show. To be fair, at episode 4, we're a third of the way through it. And they're trying to give this sense of the president being some kind of a puppet master kind of figure. Who wants Master Chica returns with Masha, pretty much showing up the dolls. They have a conversation about, about why exactly Master Chica doesn't want to join the student council. And long story short, he hasn't given himself a concrete reason to, or something to actually pursue. And the president said, the fuck? Now I will admit I do agree with what the president is going through here. Even highlighted his own, own reason to, for him to join the student council in the first place was... Bootay. There were two girls he liked, one was out of the league, who ended up being his girl because he, apparently he was a fat guy and not in ninth grade. But over the years, he was able to lose that weight because that motivation to be the top of the student council to be worthy to take this vice president. I mean, it worked. In the anime. But using that as an excuse, pretty much tells Master Shiga to be like, this big grand deal's reason you're trying to find to join the student council doesn't have to be there. Also bringing up the stories of two episode two, where it was pretty much just like, if you even want to join the student council just to be next to somebody that's going to be president or you want to make president, that could be easily all the ambition you need. Again, with all the ambition that the president needed. On that note, he tells, well, excuse me, my chick asks for all is this, and he says that she's over there trying to mediate between the soccer and the baseball team. Which is where I get kind of lost, because apparently this was set up by the president, so my chick would go help Aya out. And him doing so shows how much stronger he could be in the student council, how much all you need him in the student council. How do you come to that conclusion and how do you set this up? Because one, just these two teams are fighting. Someone needs to go over there. If you pick Alia just for the sake of it, just because you think about it, she can go help her out. Okay, but outside of Alia's flashback, who she told the one person, where is the... Wait, I'm tripping, y'all. <laughs> And then Suo sees everything that goes on with Aya and Makashika and probably told the whole student council about it. <laughs> That's how he knew these two was already close and that this dynamic was there so he could pounce on top of it. I can't confirm that, but at this point, what else would it have been? So never mind, moving on. Now in somebody's locker room or club room, <laughs> we do have the two teams pretty much uh, facing each other, not close enough with arms to hit each other. Good point there. But Aya, while off to the side, is still in the middle on both sides. If that made sense. It's like one team is here, one team is there, and you're in the middle, but you're kind of backed up, so when they're both yelling at each other, they're not yelling directly, you're not in the way of it. Well, I gotta explain that for you. You've seen the episode, right? If all these two sides are in a heated debate, Anya is not really able to talk over them, so she already is flustered. And with the problem being that one team uses the soccer field because one, they're the soccer team, but the other team, the baseball team, needs the soccer field for extra practice because they'd be able to make it to regionals. One side is pretty much like, it's already been signed up for us to use your turf. And the other side is like, you can't sign off to use my turf because we was assigned here. For what it's worth, just to say, you want to use the soccer field. Or you want to take it from the soccer club. Yeah, by default, I got to lean towards the soccer side here. What were y'all doing beforehand? And even if the baseball team and the soccer team kind of just uses the same field, we're kind of just calling it the soccer field for the sake of convenience. At the same time, is just you use it during your resonated time, which was you already been doing to get to the way you're at in the first place. And you could say Aya wouldn't be able to convey that message, and you could say that Masashika wouldn't come to that conclusion because he wants both side, t sides to be satisfied. But in this situation, what is like a coach or teacher just to be like, hey, hey, baseball team, you tripping balls? I damn sure had that in high school. But any, anyways, all it brings up the idea of pretty much using a park that is close to the river, close to the school, blah, blah, blah. Which is public property after a school day, so as if that's going to work every time. But even with that option in mind, you then have to decide which team has to go. Again, the baseball team. But because at this point, they feel offended because now it's one thing to try to get the spot you feel you deserve. It's another thing now to feel like you're being pushed aside to have to go somewhere else. The teams get even more mad at each other. But coincidentally, the captain of each team sitting down with the arms folded, with the eyes closed, not saying a word, by the way. And while one half of this is explained later, the managers of both teams also off to the side, them ladies not getting involved in this at all. Are you kind of starting to get the feel that I can kind of feel for all you here, as in what's going on and what's happening with her right now isn't her fault at all? Because in this moment, the authority figures, or that could be the authority figures, are simply failing us. 
before you say, Arya could be that authority figure and she should be that authority figure as a member of the student council, no, because she walked in having nothing to do with this. There's actually plenty of things you can flame Arya for, and which I'm going to get into for a second, but let it be facts, you know what I'm saying? When someone is put in a situation that is BS and is unable to solve that situation that they shouldn't have anything to do with in the first place, you should not have, hold that as a strike against them. However, long story short, Arya is not able to defuse this. Having her mentally flashed back into her younger days and her younger years of pretty much the episode we've seen before with the flashback, right? Something that is still hitting her as just as hard to this day, to the point where she's almost in tears and pretty much asking for somebody to help her in Russian. Softly, I may add, almost like a whisper. Which also at the same time kind of indicates despite her asking for help right here, she still kind of would mentally believe that nobody's coming. I will go ahead and say this though. Oh yeah, the way she got out of these feelings in that flashback because of Masha Shika, not only was that kind of replayed here, it actually kind of does show a problem. While it's easy to say that Arya's character arc will probably o overcome this eventually throughout the runtime of the show, the reason this is probably still as, as much of a problem as it is because Arya received a handout. When she had the problems with the school festival back in the day, she kind of came to school the next day and Masha Shika was kind of handling it there. Instead of dwelling too much on that, I'm just going to say this. Showing somebody the, the problem, the errors of their ways and the issues that they have is one thing. It's a first huge step. But if you're in a situation where you solve the problem for them, they end up learning nothing. Even if you have to hold somebody's hand the whole time, walking them through it would be much better when it comes to helping them out. But back in the day, Arya kind of just came to school one day, looked up and the things that was going on with the school festival was being handled. And again, I understand what happens later in the episode, but to be fair, what I just was just talking about happened again here. Here comes Masashika, who can understand this is a problem because he was behind Arya the whole time, but he was about to not walk in there because he saw this as a lost cause until he heard Arya asking for help in Russian. With his own myth and old saying, like, if you're going to say this in another language and nobody can hear you, but you think nobody can hear you, how are you going to receive help? But even with that being said, he comes in there and he's like, look, bitch, I'm Masashika. And despite everything I said in this video, I do agree with Masashika's reasoning here. Pretty much the bigger team gets the bigger feel, which was the soccer team, so the soccer team's gonna get the soccer feel, which is no way I'm complaining about that. But the baseball team was like, nigga, what? I just think it was pretty much like the managers, <laughs> but he didn't say that. He looked at the managers, and the girl was pretty much just like, the managers would help the smaller team out. Which leads to another huge motivation for the baseball team. Boot hey. You want us to go to a whole nother field? Wait, we get to keep y'all bitches? Said that earlier, my new <laughs> Now after this is pretty much settled and they have to fill out the applications for all this tomorrow, the president is big on paperwork. Aya is walking with Masashika and she's pretty much like, if you defuse that situation, how you was able to defuse it like that? Because you almost like, knew like the manager was going to go over there and help him. Masashika reveals that pretty much the head of the soccer team, the head of the baseball team was dating the head of the soccer team. No, excuse me, the head of the baseball team was dating the manager of the soccer team. And that was the reason why the baseball guy wasn't saying nothing. He was kind of just sitting there because he didn't want to step on her toes and went vice versa while she was reluctant to get into the argument. As far as the other girls helping them out, the baesball team was basically with Boutte. It doesn't explain why the soccer team, <laughs> the soccer team was kind of just sitting there, but whatever. Again, authority figures have failed us this episode. On that note, we get back to the president over there like this. Same president who kind of knew how all this would go down, pretty much says, since you was able to handle all this the way you could, how are you now joining the student council? And again, maybe I don't like the whole feel about how about this had to get set up to be here, but at the same time, bruh, come on. Situation or irony aside, as a fan watching this show, outside looking in, bruh, this is obviously the story that we've been waiting on this entire time, just freaking do it. And he does so. Masashika Sanfan is like, fuck it. It's too late in the day, so we gotta figure out the application tomorrow. But Masashika will indeed join the student council. Now after this, there is indeed the big scene between Aya and Masashika. I just realized I'm not ever gonna be able to do a short video about this show. But that being said, let's kinda just do it like this. True indeed, blah blah blah. You could, I'm, in, I'm in the student council, blah blah blah, I guess you're gonna help Suo. Blah blah blah, bitch, I'm helping you, but you never say you want help. I just think I wanted to back all this since day one. Since they're not even in the student council, since they first met, she just never actually extended a hand for her to pick for them to take. Which in a general sense, I don't believe it should be somebody's motivation to have to help somebody in the first place. You shouldn't have to help somebody only because you're asked for help. But in this case, all your come on now. How many times has Masashika at this point saved your ass? But the point where Masashika straight up tells her that he wants to help her out and just shut up and take her hand. Take his hand. Even as a guy who believes action speaks louder than words, 
I guess to be fair, some people you have to just straight up tell them. This is Megan the Silent season. I guess to be fair, she can't read your mind. You gotta say that shit. And happy with tears falling from her eyes, cause she know what she want. Alia takes his hand and indeed says something in Russian. We didn't get the subtitles for this at the time. We revealed what she said at the end of the episode, but act like you watched the anime before and you knew. She tells him in Russian that she loves him. I love you. Those are three words. Then this catches Russian Shika off guard for real. Cause in another moment of characterization that needs to be unlocked later, we need to have a Macho Shika episode for the second of Macho Shika. We do. Macho Shika, who believes he couldn't feel this emotion anymore, recollects the moment when he first felt that emotion, when he first met that girl that he was able to learn Russian from in the first place. A story I'm still not even gonna try to unpack and let the show do itself. Now, as a man, as a male, I have accepted the fact that I'm not gonna be able to understand this for real and really even know where this actually comes from. The woman's intuition is a motherfucker. All I'm gonna say is somehow, some way, in some shape or form, even for the slightest moment or whoever it was, in this moment of this confession, all they was able to tell that Masasika thought of a different girl. In her case, another woman. Which has now all your squeezing Masashika's hand. And we come to learn something else about our Ice Princess. Apparently she's strong as fuck. And a shout out to the animator who her anger in her eyes. All just like, bro, what the fuck? Even having a boy Masashika break the fourth wall and talking about something. He can't, he made the biggest mistake in the wrong call as an MC. To think of another woman while a girl is confessing to you. The blasphemy. <laughs> Which, and what happens next to Nightmare has fought in my mind, but at the same time, it's, it's just an unfortunate situation where all you can really do here is can really dig in your own grave for what you can do, not answer any questions. Pretty much all you just ask him, so you think of Super, or was it you? You want to help her instead of me? Well, I wasn't thinking of her, I was thinking of a completely different bitch. What? Now, I could say it was a good play on of the situation, but Arya drove Masashika's words back at him for him to shut up and take her hand. However, her hand as in, she slaps him. Good writing move right there. However, I can't look at this as any more as in overreaction. Again, ladies, excuse me, don't really know. However, bruh. At the same time though, if you say it in a clear word, it feels like it's justified when you say it out loud. I just confess my feelings to this man. And he thought of another woman that even the girl I thought he would think about a whole different bitch. Let's just say we can see why Arya was mad. This puts Masashika on the floor, laid out again by one of Arya's hits. This time they even come with a panty shot. There's been no fan service in this episode either, but two for two right now. Then they continue to walk home with a numb cheek. <laughs> Masashika apparently decides his face is numb. And for the sake of time, Arya tries to apologize for this, but Masashika says don't worry about it. But apparently Arya takes it upon herself to kiss him on the cheek, which catches Masashika off guard. However, apparently his cheek is numb, and she said it was a cheek kiss, as in cheek to cheek. Man, when? How long was that a thing? Of course, situation irony as the fans we could clearly tell there was a kiss on the cheek. She used her lips. However, Arya has evolved, and <laughs> instead of even saying what she actually did in Russian, at this point, she just hides her feeling completely, right? So yeah, I switched the name of this show. But even our boy Masashika is like, hold on, you didn't say what you actually said in a different language. Tell me something. <laughs> Life's gone harder for you, huh, Masashika? Now you gotta deal with these mixed signals in real life like everybody else. I think this kind of proves the one with the main character card in this show, sir. Then they do roll the credits here, but after the credits, we pretty much, you know, get another scene with Anya at the end. Anya, who is embarrassed in high hell that she uh, admitted that she loves him, but she is trying to neglect these feelings. This video is getting long, so I'm not going to go in on this topic like I initially said I would, but what I'll say is here. Anya is tripping so much. And the thing with Anya is, and I don't mean to say this as a downer on the show and be as a negative trait in the show, but here's the issue Alia has, for real, for real. But the moments that the back we've seen the most from her, like in the, when she was in elementary school, she first met Masashika and how things are going right now. And these last four episodes, technically three if you don't count the flashbacks, she hasn't grown at all. She's still very much haunted by the things of the past because she hasn't learned how to actually deal with the situation she gets herself into as she got into in middle school. Masashika was helping her out at two occasions now in this kind of situation, but kind of just a cop out for her. And my biggest critique of her in episode one after watching episode three is the fact that all these situations and all these events play out in front of you between you two, between specifically Aya and Masashika, yet she doesn't even look at it as much. 
to the point in episode one, you can't even tell if they're actually friends. It has to be said in episode two, just as a mean to get Asuo. Me helping you out with the school festival, making sure everybody had a good time and dancing with you in front of the fire, and at least being y'all was friends. Then when she denies the whole thing about being in love with Masa Shiga here, even though she was saying and rushing the first two episodes how cute he was, how lovely he was, and how infatuated you was with him, as somebody who keeps recollecting her, her worst moments over and over again, this girl doesn't hear herself talk. And I think a big thing to kind of sum up all your what she needs to do to get through this series, she needs to see things for what they are. Because even if you believe, like me, that she hasn't grown much from that moment in middle school, uh, elementary school, and from that school, school festival, the situation with the soccer and baseball team here was kind of unrelated. But still, she kind of just automatically flashed back to that same moment. That's not the same, and you couldn't handle this completely differently, which you already had started to do, but it's, again, you talk about something else. Yo, you got ADHD. Undiagnosed? I know that feeling. And everybody else around the show can see how close you are to Masashika, but here you are kind of like, even now while the door has been completely open for you to try to do things to grow on your own with character development, at this point in the show, right now, Masashika have to tell you to shut up and take his hand. It shouldn't have come to that. She's the same guy you lashed out at the school festival, but ended up helping you out anyways. Well, who's the man you think you're playing with right now? But, like I said, the door has been open, and maybe all you can finally move forward from here. Well, one last thing. With the, 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 the things that Masha said towards her, pretty much saying that she already knew that all your loves Masha Shika, she needs to go ahead and make a move on him before someone else does. And while that can imply a many things, we have to remind ourselves in a show like this where love is kind of being thrown out at us, at some point there does become a legitimate love rival. And for promotional pictures of this show, promotional posters that kind of care about the show on Reddit, different outlets, or even Crunchyroll itself, there's still like two more major characters that need to be introduced to this story. And in an event to not reach the 17 minute mark, I'm gonna leave it at that. Again, excuse the long videos, but this show gets you a lot to break down. I like talking about it. I ain't gonna hold ya. So on that note, let's get up out of here. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Move. Mm -hmm.